So I was asked a question in a teaching session the other day that I didn't know the answer to. I thought it might make a good, quick video topic. Essentially, it was a scenario where we had a post-op patient who was in the post-anesthetic recovery room uh, who was uh, quite hypotensive. And this patient was post-bowel surgery and had a thoracic epidural placed. Uh, and so one of the things on the differential diagnosis for the hypotension was maybe the epidural was not cited appropriately. Maybe it was actually cited intrathecally or intravascularly. Uh, and as a result, it was causing hypotension uh, because we know that um, local anesthetic uh, solution in uh, spinal or, or in an epidural can cause systemic hypotension by decreasing systemic vascular resistance. The question I was asked was, how can you exclude that from your differential diagnosis? Or how can you uh, in, make yourself comfortable that your epidural is not actually in the intrathecal space or in the intravascular space? And I didn't know how to necessarily answer that question because I hadn't really thought of it before in a setting where you yourself didn't put the epidural in um, and you're assessing somebody else's work afterwards. So uh, I thought I'd make a quick little video uh, about what I thought. Uh, so the first thing that I kind of thought of, well, in a pinch, you can always aspirate. So stick your syringe on the end of the epidural catheter and aspirate looking for CSF or blood. Very uncomfortable. Another thing you can do is a clinical exam. And you, you're probably going to do this anyway as your evaluation, as part of your evaluation of hypotension. But you're looking for essentially signs of decrease SVR. And so that's going to be um, uh, peripheral warmth, flushing, anything that makes you think there's systemic vascular resistance decrease that's that's out of the ordinary or that's, that's not normal. Um, the one thing that I didn't actually think of and I had to be prompted for this is you can check for motor block. And this will kind of form the crux of this video. Um, but if the patient has a significant motor block, then it's more likely that they had an intrathecal injection of local anesthetic. Now, the reason that happens is we can go back to our kind of basic physiology of, uh, of these nerves is that with uh, spinal and epidural anesthetics, we get a sympathetic block first. Then we get decrease uh, pain, touch, temperature. Then we get motor blockade. And that has to do with the factors that, that influence the local anesthetics um, uh, interaction with these nerves. So uh, the factors that then influence that are uh, the size of the nerves or diameter, whether they're myelinated or unmyelinated, um, and the firing frequency. So these Sympathetic fibers are the smallest, so the local anesthetics is going to be taken up by those nerves and work the fastest. Uh, the myelinated fibers are more likely uh, to take up local anesthetic than the unmyelinated, but uh, only of the same size. So these large alpha motor neurons that are thick and myelinated are going to be blocked last by local anesthetic. So at concentrations that we're using of local anesthetics in epidurals, they're much less likely to produce a motor blockade than if the local anesthetics actually injected intrathecally. So in a pinch, if you're trying to figure out if this epidural uh, is cited intrathecally or intravascularly, uh, ask the patient if they can move their legs 